And we're back live now in our studio. And now we're going to have a discussion about the state of literary criticism in the age of the internet. That is the title of this next discussion. For that, I'm joined by three guests, Stephen Elliott of The Rumpus, Bob Minzesheimer from formerly of USA Today, now freelance, That's right? right. That's right? And our own Kelly Corrigan, my co-host on our days of coverage here at the fair. So let's, um, let's, let's start with this. Um, Maybe we should start with the old media, right? Old media. USA Today. <laughs> You're looking at me. I'm looking at you, <laughs> Mr. Old Media. Well, until September, I was uh, part of, I guess, the medium um, old towards moving towards new media. I, I wrote about books and authors for USA Today. In fact, I, that's how I met Kelly. Uh -huh. And I also interviewed uh, Stephen in, in during those years. Um, anyway, for 17 years, I wrote about books and authors. Um, first, for strictly the print newspaper then for both the print newspaper and on, then online, and increasingly just online until September when they downsized the staff of the newspaper and I was out of a job, um, which is happening to a lot of which newspapers. Which is a fairly common story now. Newspapers are cutting back. And, and you are part of it. I am part of it. I'm not the first, not the last. Mm -hmm. Stephen, what, what is your, uh, do you come well, from, from the old world of print? No, no, I don't come from any particular world, I don't think. <laughs> I was, you know. I, not of this world. Not of this world. I had finished uh, my last book, was my seventh book, was The Adderall Diaries. And I really, when I finished that book, I just felt I had kind of given everything. You know, I had nothing really left to say. And so I thought I would go into editing, because I had figured out how to do that from writing so much. And I was talking to Ariana Huffington about joining the Huffington Post, because I had interviewed her before for Esquire. And I was like, yeah, we'll start a book page. They didn't have one yet. You know, we'll do a local page. And, and, um, and we met, and I had a bunch of ideas, and I just thought, she's not going to do this. Mm -hmm. And anyway, why am I giving all my ideas to her? It's, it's very easy to start a website, yeah. you know? And so uh, I started The Rumpus. I knew a lot of writers, because I had done a lot of like literary organizing, uh, political fundraisers. Um, and I didn't know what it was going to be. I knew we were, I was very interested in the literary world, because it was the world that I existed in. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of became what it is, you know, which is, a website with a very literary bent. We run a lot of book reviews, you know, mm -hmm. and we do a lot of author interviews as well. And, and, and you come in as author and interview, and well, yes, I you mean, have I'm a person hats. who's very dependent as yeah. a writer. I'm very yeah. dependent on people talking about books, yeah. and it's sort of critical, and it breaks my heart that I don't have you on speed dial anymore at the <laughs> USA Today. <laughs> well, what have um, you seen in your own experience? Well, it's interesting. I wonder about your demographic at the Rumpus, and I wonder if part of what's happening is that there are all these young people who are looking at book reviews online that maybe weren't ever going to open USA Today. So do you, do you know a lot about your demographic? Uh, not that much. We have a lot of them. Uh -huh. I know, uh, you know we have like between like 700,000 and a million uh, page views a month. But you know, it's just a very small operation, kind of yeah. haphazard. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people, and you know, and they're reading the reviews. Um, you know, it's hard to say though if, if, you know, in that earlier time, would those be the people that are that are reading the newspaper? Probably, right? Mm -hmm. The people that are interested in books. They're they're young, and and what you realize very early on in this place like the Rumpus is that it, it's not a magazine; it's a community. Mm -hmm. And so these are people that are coming here. Because yeah. What, what's that mean? I mean, what's what's the difference? Well, like for instance, um, the things that, that pay for the rumpus are things like the book club, right? The rumpus, the book club, you would get the book a month before it's published. And we talk about it all month. Uh, you pay $25 a month, we talk about it all month, and at the end of the month, we have a host an online discussion between the book club and the author, right? And so that is one of the main things that funds the rumpus. And what you're doing is you're, you're buying deeper into the publication, right? Who yeah. picks the book? Uh, we do. You pick the book. Yeah. Does the publishers support you in any way? Oh yeah. Well, we well, we, we, we pay uh, wholesale for the books. Okay. And so, we get so the books. So you're almost acting as a bookstore in a way. Yeah. And yeah. we get bookstore book and curator. Yeah. Of, uh, and they let us right. get the book yeah. a month in advance. They make you know they work with us very closely. And some some of them have come out with a with a rump, special rumpus edition like label on the book. Right. And you're picking the book because some editor liked the book. Uh, we so usually read the book first. Also, you know, we, I talk I mean, to... When I say you're an editor, you rumpus editor. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. right, right, yeah, right. The, you know, the, 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 the board, there's like six of us. And, we, and there's people that we trust that recommend stuff and so forth. Well, so that, I mean, that, that rings 
familiar and you know, right. right it's that same, same sort of curator type right. role right well the reason I ask those questions is is one of the I mean the internet has a lot of great advantages um, you don't have to make things fit mm -hmm. you don't have to mail it or deliver it all those sort of things but the question is sometimes is the motive of people and a lot of online reviews you're not sure where the person is coming from mm -hmm. it could be the author's aunt or grandmother who could be saying this is the greatest thing since that's really you know, important. Costa. And, and in newspapers, at least in theory, you had a sort of check of quality that there was a degree of separation between the reviewer and the publisher of the book or the author. Yes. Mm -hmm. And online, it's a different kind of world. It's oh, a lot what better work. Mm -hmm. My entire family is required to put Amazon reviews up for mm -hmm. me. Yeah, right. And and right, but that but, but doesn't that go to your community well, idea? Because you learn to you you, you learn, learn to trust in a different way. You learn right? what the community wants. There is a very strict policy. Of, you know, friends cannot review friends' books. We don't do anything like that. Right. But then at the same time, you know, like we had uh, we ran the Dear Sugar column by Cheryl Strayed. And so when the book Wild was coming out, right. I knew so the book club was going to want to read this book. And so it, the, book, the selections are driven by what, they, what we think the book club is going to want. They're paying, right? We can't afford to give them books they don't want because our friend wrote them, right? This, that, that's a whole, mm -hmm. that would kind of destroy. Well, so how much does this change which books get reviewed or which books get attention? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's reminding me of grad school. So in my day, you know, I had to go to school at night twice a week to get that kind of experience where if you wanted to read a book with other people who were deep, thoughtful readers who would come out of the pages with something passionate to say. And so you're filling that gap for people. Yeah, I mean, we're expected to be curators for sure. And I think that it's hard to find cur curation is such a thing, right? Because I mean, if you look at the Huffington Post, it's just the Internet. It's not curated. It's literally you're just the Internet. It's just a mess, you know? And so people are coming to a place like the Rumpus because they share an aesthetic, right? We enjoy the same types of books, mm. you know. Maybe they're they're very literary. All, all of our books are literary, you yeah. know. By that means character driven. You know, you're not going to get fine cookbooks, right? You know, and so forth. Are you sort of transparent about how a book gets gets chosen? Uh, reasonably, you yeah. know. I don't think that we certainly aren't would never hide anything. Yeah. You know, there there have been times when we wanted a book and the publisher hasn't let us have it. Oh, um, because it was some big book that they were, you know, they didn't mm -hmm. want to let it out a month early. Mm. Um, we're very careful uh, if we see like, oh, okay, that's that's too many white guys, you know, like we're on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, we don't like we don't let those situations develop. Um, yeah, you know, and, and 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 it's a and it's a it's a group of people. There's like six of us or something uh, at the minimum that are talking about this. So, and those are people that, like Roxane Gay is one of those people. She's not an editor at the Rumpus anymore, but she's still on that list. Mm. So right. anything we're doing, would, we're well aware, would certainly get out there. You know yeah. what I mean? We couldn't get away with anything, well, uh, whatever you, that would you, be. You raised one of the concerns of the age of the internet reviewing. That is, you know, right. can you trust the review? Right. Do you have other issues that you see out there that either good or bad as from these changes? Well, I always h hated this phrase, gatekeeper, right. which is an old sociological phrase. Right. And and um, by nature, newspaper reporters, newspaper editors, even book editors, magazine editors were all gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. They would let a little bit out and close it off to everyone else, mm -hmm. maybe arbitrarily, maybe unfairly. And in, and in a new internet world, it's like, uh, who needs a gatekeeper? You know, let, let's let readers decide what we want. Let, and in an age when anybody can publish a book pretty easily, pretty cheaply, they're now declaring they're, they're no longer self-published authors, they're indie authors. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the idea that somebody is going to you know, control the gate, it sounds very elitist, is, is uh, sort of under attack. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always work well, but I think what, what, what readers are looking for in reviews is somebody they get to know. Um, and, and that's why mm -hmm. I think a, a, a reviewer who is at it for a while, um, looking at it as, you know, you're not looking at it objectively. It's an opinion, but you're looking at it professionally, so some kind of standards beyond just your gut reaction. Mm -hmm. um, and 
lots of times on the internet you don't you don't get that because there are no editors. Well, you and know, the most popular thing on the Rumpus in that way is like people don't read the book reviews as often. Right. But what they read is we'd have a column called Last Book I Loved. Yeah, and we also have right. very strong standards about that, right? It can't be someone you know, for mm -hmm. example. I'll go and look at your Facebook page and make sure you don't you're not Facebook friends with that person, you know. But that's what I find people respond to much more. They're not actually looking a kind of, uh, for a review of a book you don't like. They want a to know. recommendation and, or and a list recommendation. that we're all familiar and with. And one yeah. of the problems with reviews sometimes is you can sort of write your way out of getting the person to read the book. If you tell them too much about the book, especially if it's a novel and you mm. summarize the whole plot summary, that's not a good review. Um, your job is not to necessarily sell the book, but to raise interest in it. I would ask. Kelly, when, when you were an author, did you, so did I still the, am. I'm not, I'm like, sorry, when you were yeah. an author. I hope to have a long career. Well, as an author, as, as far as I know, I am still an author. outside let this me, room. Okay. Let me rephrase the question. Yes. As an author, yes. when a review was in print as opposed to online, how yes. much difference did that make for you? I mean, it depends on the review. It's but, well, book sales are um, incredibly uh, obscure. I mean, it's very difficult. Uh, to have a really strong sense of what's driving what. And in fact, there's a huge delay in the information coming in, coming in, book sales, and then when we get it as authors. So we see twice a year I get some statement that says this is how many books have sold. And I really have no very little sense about what the drivers are on those books. I mean, obviously, when you're on the Today Show, you will hit the bestseller list for one minute, guaranteed. One minute. Yeah. The rest is one minute all on even, Amazon. Even, even the news hour. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, right. exactly. Right. Although I haven't right. been invited yet. I oh. hope that maybe. Um, and uh, so, but you know, for, but it meant something different to me, for sure. Um, it, it, and you know, like a Janet Maslin or a Maureen Corrigan, I mean, these are people um, that we've been turning to for many, many years. Right. And so I know that if Maureen Corrigan likes a book, I'm going to like it because we've tested the relationship over time. She doesn't know it. But I, I mean, I have taken her seriously. <laughs> and bought the book and found that I agree with her reviews generally, and so she becomes like an A.O. Scott or a mm -hmm. Tony Lane or mm -hmm. someone that you can really trust. You know, uh, just a couple of minutes here, and I, I just want to ask you something I hear less discussed, which is putting it on the writing, the writers. Do, do we see any changes in writing because of these kinds of changes in how audiences are coming to books? That is, you know, there's throughout time, people have written a style, you know, a New Yorker style mm -hmm. or a New York Review mm -hmm. book style. Is there now a uh, you know a rumpus style? Mm -hmm. Are there are people writing in a different way for well, we these are, new audiences? I, you know we we are in a moment of uh, epiphanic memoirs. You know the the self help literary novel, and and the memoirs that are read with a with a, an edge of self help to them. You know like where you want to improve yourself or be inspired in a different way. And that's you know that's a certain literary movement that's probably influenced by the internet. But then at the same time, you know, there's books like I just I just read the first three volumes of My Struggle by you know, Carl Ove Nosgaard. I mean, this is like, yeah, you know, this is this is Proust. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and those books are always going to be written. I really believe that, no matter what happens, they might have a smaller audience, but they'll keep being written. And also, uh, somewhere around seventy percent of all books are still being written read in print. I, I still only read books in print. Can I tell you? <laughs> I mean, like I will, wait, wait. Yeah, I will well. admit that I work harder on a piece that I know is going to be printed, like say for O Magazine or Glamour, or, um, than uh, something that I put online, for yeah. sure. I mean, I, I just feel that there's a slightly higher standard, and that maybe somebody's going to underline something or write in the margin or some such that when when you're looking at something on a screen, it just feels so fleeting to me that. And I feel they're just going to be reading it on their iPad while they're on their Stairmaster with their headphones on. And I think, yeah, you're not going to yeah. appreciate this. Even I'm not going to beat my brains <laughs> out for this sentence. Even on the New York, New York Times, I've noticed, you know, that there's the things that are published only online in the New York yeah. Times. Yes. They're not as good. They yes. are nowhere. They're, they're seriously deficient. Even the really popular ones are never as good as the ones that are in the paper. So what does that say about Rumpus? Aren't you yeah. in trouble then? Uh, you know, we're, we're he's, trying to pick up the slack. He's, he's both. You know, yeah. we don't, we don't have, we're not, a, we're not funded. Yeah. We don't make any money, you know, per se. <laughs> like, Those it's not, oh, that. Not, oh, that. Uh, yeah, we didn't not even a big get business. Well, that's sort of, to a that's where we started. But, we're, well, but that's where we started with you. We're USA reviewing today. books and nobody yeah. else is reviewing books. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing what we can. You yeah. know, we're not trying, we're not trying to replace anybody. Yeah. You know, we're just trying to like help 
get you know convince people to read books. And, and uh -huh. your title comes from where the wild things are. Where? No, oh, no, no. I just asked some girl I was dating what I should name it, and she was like, "Well, I have a dog called Rumpus," and I was like, "All right, I'll call it the Rumpus." And then oh, did you get the tat before yeah. the Rumpus took no, off? Or no, no, we were it took off? we were like uh, two years in, I think. And me and my managing editor at the time, Isaac Fitzgerald, we went. I, I think I said it was a funny idea, and he yeah. was so excited by it, I couldn't not do it. And so we both went and got rumpus tattoos. All right, you know what? We started at this highfalutin <laughs> criticism of the fault, age of I'm internet, sorry. It's and my now fault. we're with the dog of his ex girlfriend, yeah, right. Edja Rumpus. <laughs> All right, Kelly Corrigan, Bob Minzenheimer, That's right? right? Yes. And Stephen Elliott. Thank you all three very much. Thanks. And you're watching PBS's live coverage of Book View Now, Miami Book Fair International, live from Miami Dade College. I'm your host, Jeffrey Brown. And still to come today, we'll take you inside an evening with the National Book Award winners and finalists and talk with two of the winners, Phil Cly and Evan Osnos. And you can join the conversation on Twitter at BookViewNow and find us online at BookViewNow.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back. My favorite part of the book fair is because I love the, all the authors that are here. My name is Chloe and I've never been to the book fair, so... And my favorite part of the book fair is being able to meet all the authors. My name is Isabella, and I like the book fair be a lot because I like reading. Book View Now, Miami Book Fair International, is brought to you by... The John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, in association with PBS Digital Studios. I just challenge you to go through the book fair and not find something that you're interested in. One of the things I love about the book fair is it is a cornucopia of opportunity. You can literally find any kind of literary discipline you're interested in. You can see your favorite author. You can see somebody you've never heard of. But when they all get together, there's a synergy that begins to happen. Knight Foundation, proud sponsor of PBS's coverage of the Miami Book Fair International.